Scott Morrison still faces a few hurdles before he gets to Glasgow. Some are easily cleared. <laughs> Others more unpredictable. It's not a case of holding anybody to ransom or anything like that. Well, it's a bit like that. The Nationals are the very last stubborn holdout before the Prime Minister can formally embrace a net zero emissions target for 2050. Scott Morrison never leads. And on this issue, he's contracted it out to Barnaby Joyce of all people. The PM is scheduled to leave for Scotland in less than a fortnight, but the Nationals are warning Liberals would be foolish to rush them into a decision. In anything in life, if someone believes they're being forced into a corner, you know what they're going to do. They're going to say no. There's a lot of religion in this, but the religious zealots from both sides need to bugger off and let the adults in the room work through the issues. In a bid to convince the Nationals to come on board, Mr Morrison's pushing the economic benefits of a clean energy future, including the possible creation of tens of thousands of jobs. But there'll be no increase to the Coalition's medium-term emission reduction target for 2030. We set a target, we meet it and we beat it. Uh, it's, a very, it's a very Australian approach to this and it's worked, it will always work. Why has the Prime Minister given the Deputy Prime Minister and the National Party a veto on whether Australia takes action on climate change? The government's decision on the government's commitments for Australia in relation to COP26 will be made by the government in Cabinet, Mr Speaker. But not before the Nationals have extracted tens of billions of dollars in regional support. And that's the transactional cost. The political one will be how the coalition can reconcile embracing a climate change policy that's got similarities to the one Labor took to the last election. How we would pivot from two years ago saying that radical cuts to emissions would wreck the Australian economy and then two years later turn around and go, oh sorry we got it all wrong, you know I'd be pretty pissed if I was Bill Shorten. Hard to argue with that. Andrew Proben, ABC News, Canberra.